Welcome to Bad Gear, the show about the world's most hated audio tools. Boutiques are a weird bunch of instruments, ranging from Gulliver's 808 and roided up analog miniature mocs to microscopic D50 facsimiles and the black Bluetooth bit crush abomination Roland wants to Photoshop out of existence. Today we are going to talk about the JX03, one of the three original 2016 boutique synths and shrink rate digital version of the JX03. X3P, a less desirable nerdy relative of the 80s Juno family its legendary cousins didn't want to be seen with in public. Roland, you really know what your customers want. At the first glance, the JX03 is ticking more boxes than the original. All the cheesy presets are there. But Roland also included a list of additional features we will talk about in a minute. In order to get an understanding for the underlying concept of the boutique, we should take a look at the history of the original. The JX3P was released in 1983, more or less at the same time as the DX7. Roland had been working on the GR700 guitar synthesizer, which, in deference to the needs of our ex swinging friends, mostly relied on pre set sounds. The creators of the instrument built a programmer for development purposes and somewhere along the way they came up with the idea to attach a keyboard and sell it as a budget-friendly alternative to the more upscale Junos. A refined version of this controller, the PG200, was sold separately to make up for the minimalist UI. In contrast to the original, the JX03 comes with all the knobby goodness of the PG200, which is much appreciated. Appreciated. Quite similar to most other polyphonic boutiques, voice count is reduced to 4, a possible deal breaker for lovers of lush pad sounds. Speaking of facepalm inducing upgrades, the 32 user patch slots have been reduced to 16, which limits the boutique's use as a live instrument. The synth engine is straightforward. Two oscillators with a wider choice of waveforms and noise spectra extended tonal range and the cross-modulation options of the 3P sync and metal are complemented by one variation each and a ring modulator. The output of this surprisingly versatile oscillator section is pumped through a Juno-esque filter and a high pass. Global modulation options are basic but effective. Both LFO and envelope can be routed to filter and pitch which also allows for more drastic sound design in the cross-modulation department. I appreciate the added LFO waveforms, Juno-like envelope inversion and the organ-style VCA envelope to free up the ADSR. You can turn off the noise emulation of the respectable chorus effect. And there's a hidden chorus just like on the JP08. Adjusting the delay effect is a bit fiddly. The original 3P boasted a 128-step polyphonic sequencer and it goes without saying that Roland put the same. Just kidding, the JX03 sequencer is monophonic with a maximum of 16 steps. You can, however, set it to swing, change step order. Tie notes and adjust gate time. 
Most of the less obvious features are only accessible by using Mortal Kombat finishing move worthy button combinations. The manual doesn't help much, but there's an unofficial user guide that opens up new possibilities like an undocumented layer mode. Portamento was not included in the original either. I would have preferred larger knobs in exchange for the unnecessarily huge pitch and mod strips and there's the usual Groundhog Day of boutique peculiarities. The JX03 is the underdog of the classic boutiques and more affordable than most of its poly siblings. The JX03 is Roland's digital take on one of their less iconic analog synths of the early 80s. Can it be that this version is an actual improvement over the original? You have already heard the little boutique in today's intro tune. To my surprise, this one made it into my personal top 5. Let's start this off nice and easy with a one bar pattern from the internal sequencer. Interesting, it seems like a more mid-rangey version of a Juno sound. The filter is smooth and I like the added variety of the oscillator section. I opted for a slower chord progression of the pad sound to avoid note stealing, certainly not ideal. I wanna know how the synth performs when confronted with more complex polyphonic patterns. <laughs> Some of you prefer a darker sound, but the JX handles plucky sounds nicely and its controls are super responsive. Although there are quite a few sweet spots, I'm not 100% satisfied with the result of the two jams. Time to dig a little deeper in this DAW powered, dark and sinister parallel universe of early European electronica. Just like the original JX3P, the boutique version flies under the radar of many synth lovers. I'm not an expert when it comes to the authenticity of the emulation, but it certainly got the flair of early 80s analog and a very distinct sound. While the boutique format makes sense in this case, I'm not sure if the Sonic character is as universally appreciated as that of the Juno family. However, the tones work well in a busy mix and I would recommend the JX03 3 as a sparing partner for bigger sounding synths. Boutiques have come a long way since the first generation and as we are slowly evolving from 80s cult to 90s synth postmodernism, Roland might as well go full on zero years with a brand new DO2. Thanks for watching and see you next time! Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the episode, feel free to like, subscribe, become a patron and leave a comment what other kind of gear you would like to see and hear on the show. 